Well, my name is Allison Jones. I'm a registered dietitian, and I'm the health and wellness coordinator for Health Alliance. I'm also on the Halley Health team. Halley is our health and wellness brand. Uh, hi, my name is Autumn Taylor. I am the women's basketball head athletic trainer. So can you tell me um, what your educational background and your professional training is? Yeah, so I actually got my undergrad degree in athletic training from the George Washington University, and I got my master's there as well in uh, exercise physiology. Um, from there, I got certified by our board credentialing system so that you have to take a test to become certified, and I'm now also licensed in the state of Illinois as okay. an athletic trainer. Awesome. How long have you been in your current role? So here at Illinois, I've been here for about five years. Okay. Yeah. Um, next, we'll move into injury prevention and rehabilitation. Um, how do you assist your athletes in reducing or mitigating the risk of injuries during the season? Yeah, so a, a lot of that uh, injury like risk prevention actually happens before the season even starts for us. So when all of our student athletes get here in the summer, we do an intake. Um, through that intake, we do a movement screen. Uh, we have them do strength assessments. We kind of see what their previous hin injury history is and how we can kind of mitigate that in the future. So we take that information, we develop individualized programs for each student athlete. Um, those last the entire summer session, so that's about six weeks. Uh, and then at the end of that, we retest and we do like a little bit of a mini program throughout the season to keep the, those things uh, kind of in check throughout. Okay. So, and then once we're in season, um, we do a lot in terms of making sure um, they're taking care of themselves, they're open, open and honest with the injuries that they have. Um, we try to make sure that our off days are very tailored towards recovery, mm -hmm. um, and we're very fortunate to have a lot of things at our disposal here in Oven um, that kind of help with those processes. Okay. Um, how do you approach rehab for athletes recovering from injuries? Probably pretty individual. Um, yeah, <laughs> I would say they're all pretty individualized uh, based on the injury. But one of the nice things about that stuff that we do over the summer is that we have data. So we have their baseline data and we know what we're trying to work back towards. So that gives us a little bit of a, a kind of an edge in, in terms of like, one, try to motivate the student athlete. This is what you were at before. This is our goal going forward. Um, but two, it also just lets us know that we're, not, we're doing the right things as we go throughout the process. But um, it's all about just making sure that they're as strong as they can be to do what they need to do on the court. Mm -hmm. um, and also, like, making sure that they're mentally okay. Um, a lot of that is, you know, when you get injured one time, mm -hmm. you're really afraid of that happening again. So a lot of uh, confidence boosting, um, helping them understand uh, that their body's okay and that they're safe and that they're, the chances of them re-injuring themselves is not as high as they think it is. Mm -hmm. All right, nutrition and recovery next. What role does nutrition play in your training program? So nutrition is huge. Um, I think we do a really good job in trying to help our athletes understand the role that nutrition plays in terms of recovery and performance. Mm -hmm. um, we're lucky to work with a registered dietitian on staff, um, and she's with us every single day. She helps sit in, plan our meals for our team, but she also helps educate our student athletes. So she helps teach them on everything from what macronutrients do for your body to how you can use supplementation to help further your goals. So all of those little things um, play a big part. Um, and have helped us kind of reduce injury and, and help them stay healthy along the way. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, how do you address recovery strategies to optimize performance? So one of the strategies we use to help optimize performance for our student athletes is that fueling right after practice. Like that's mm -hmm. a big, big thing. So making sure they're getting the, the protein and the carbohydrates they need that they just, they just lost and replaced, knowing that they need to use that to rebuild and get those muscle tissues back. Uh, but also focusing on hydration. Mm -hmm. uh, we've made a huge push on hydration this year. Uh, if you see a student athlete walking around with a gallon on campus, that's probably a, a basketball player. Um, but just letting them know that they need that to also try to keep their bodies in the best shape that they can be in. Okay, great. Um, how do you communicate with the athletes and track their progress? Uh, I do a lot of in-person communication, so I'm lucky that I get to see them every single day. Yeah. So every single one of our kids have to walk through my office to get to the locker room, so I okay. get to check in with them every day and say, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. And that's everything from physically, how are you doing, but also mentally, how are you doing? Um, so it's really easy then to just be able to see day to day those interactions let you know. Even if someone says that they're okay, you can usually kind of tell when they're, mm -hmm. they're lying to you when you have that. Um, ability to see them so often, um, but 
in terms of tracking, um, we just use our EMRs. We just track daily what they do come in and do, um, how they feel once they do something, um, how that kind of may be the difference maker and what is it's kind of reducing their soreness or their injury or anything like that um, kind of helps. Okay. Um, what tools or methods do you use to monitor their performance and well-being? Uh, so Any apps or yeah, so we actually use um, they all of our student athletes wear a uh, tracking device during practice and games that helps us kind of evaluate their load. Okay. Um, so that tells us our, their mileage, how hard they're working, uh, and so we use that to kind of plan our practices and things for the week. So if we know that someone is at a much higher load and they're saying. Uh, my body doesn't feel so great this week. We have those two data points. We know that they probably need to scale back a little bit. Mm -hmm. Or if we see that someone hasn't really worked as hard as someone else that week, like maybe they can do a little bit extra, um, get in and do some extra conditioning, something like that, so that they're staying in the same level that they need to be in case they have to come off and onto the court um, and fill in for someone else. Um, that just really helps us. Yeah, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you've touched on this a little bit. How do you address the mental and emotional aspects of athletic performance? Yeah, so the mental side of athletics is, is becoming a bigger piece. It's always been there, but now it's something we're actually talking about on the forefront. And for our staff, we're really blessed that we have a sports psychologist that oh. actually is a part of our staff. She travels with us on the road. Um, we have a therapist that works very closely with our team. Um, so we make it a huge priority. Um, Coach Green has been amazing about that. Like mental health is a, is a big part of the game mm -hmm. um, and mental performance. So just making sure that our student athletes understand that we're all okay with that. Mental health days, you can take them as you need them. Mm -hmm. uh, no one's ever gonna be mad at you for needing to take care of yourself. Yeah. So um, we just do whatever we can to make those things a little bit easier for them. But being able to have a lot of that on, like in-house and mm -hmm. easy for them, if they want to just come off the court and meet with someone in the building, it's there for them to do so. Yeah, that's so good. Yeah. All right, last but not least, how do you stay up to date on the latest developments in sports science and training methods? So for me personally, I do a lot of conferences over the oh. summer. So. Mm -hmm. um, that's a big part of like what that off season looks like is re staying on top of that knowledge and learning what's new out there. But we also have a lot of like connections within our conference. So uh, within the Big Ten, we have several subgroups and the basketball subgroup is, is really great and very open. We have a text message chain that like, if you have this going on, um, how do you handle it? Have, what's something new that you've tried? What's something new that's working? So we can bounce ideas off of each other and do all of that. But other than that, it's just staying on top of research. The NATA, which is the National Athletic Training Association, comes mm -hmm. out with new guidelines yearly. Um, just making sure you're staying on top of that and paying attention to what's new and coming out is just very important. Yeah, well, awesome. Well, thank you very much. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm.